there's something very different about what happens when you sketch, when you draw. And there's research that talks about this. So, let me just explain, um, this is from a, a, a paper that was written recently by Mueller and Oppenheimer. And it takes a little bit of unpacking, so bear with me for a sec. What they basically did was they had some, some students in a learning situation and they gave them some different ways that they could get information down. There were two different types of information too. Factual, if I'm just teaching facts and you're getting facts, and conceptual. So concepts, ideas more than facts. So two different types of information were coming at the students and there were three different um, conditions, three different ways of things that they looked at. And you can see them up the top here. The first one was that they gave some kids, some students, a laptop with no intervention, which meant just use a laptop, type it down, do whatever you need to do. The second one was that they actually wrote stuff. They, they took handwritten notes. And the third one was laptop, open brackets, intervention, close brackets. So what does that mean? Basically, the research says that when you take notes with a keyboard in a learning situation, you're actually more likely to take verbatim notes. One of the reasons that keyboards exist is because they are faster than writing and they help us to be neater than writing. There's two reasons. People can type faster than they can write. Now you might think that's awesome because in a lecture I can get down more stuff. What the research shows is the stuff you're getting down is the verbatim copying of what the presenter said. Verbatim copying of what the presenter said. Full stop, next line. If you're working in handwriting, you can't do that. So what do you write down? You write down your understanding, your interpretation, your processed version of what it was the teacher said. You're doing one level of thinking. You're doing a level of processing. You can't be as fast, you have to summarize. You might diagram, you might concept map, you might do what Steve did and draw a diagram of the whole session. It's not actually about the end product, it's about the thinking process you're putting over that, that, that uh, teaching as it goes down into your paper. So when they say laptop intervention group, what they said to those students was, use your keyboard, but I don't want you to take verbatim notes. Don't try and type down everything they say, right? So laptop, just go for it longhand is written, and laptop intervention is use a keyboard, but don't take verbatim notes. And what you can see here is that in both conditions, so for both factual information and conceptual information, the impact of a keyboard was negative on their understanding, on their recall. So in other words, because they were doing no processing, they were actually acting like, and I remember this from some of my classes, um, you know, my school we implemented one-to-one -one in 1995. So the first government school in the world to do so, and what I often reflected on was the fact that sometimes my kids were being 25 photocopiers sitting in front of me. Because I'd be putting notes up on the board and they're typing it in. I'm like, that's just stupid. You know, I should be giving them those notes and then doing some activities around what those notes actually mean. Unpacking them with the kids. So, the idea of us getting lots of stuff down does not actually enhance their understanding. In terms of laptop with intervention, for factual information, it seemed to make some difference. They got understood a bit more if they were typing stuff down but not using verbatim notes. But for conceptual information, bombed out. The idea of trying to do conceptual understanding from teaching into a keyboard doesn't work. Now that doesn't matter if it's a physical keyboard or an on-screen keyboard. Okay, it's the, it's the actual, it's the, it's the process of typing stuff in that's the challenge. When we get to conceptual, you can see the difference that it makes here when you can diagram, annotate, draw, sketch within your notes. It makes a significant difference. So when you reflect back on, on some of the stuff happening in my mate's lectures, he's getting the slides from the, from the presenter, he's getting it, putting it straight into a page, and he's actually annotating and drawing and sketching over it while he's learning. And he's taking notes. Now it's very interesting because often what happens is university students say, can't the teacher just give us the, you've got your PowerPoint, right? Can't you just give it to us so I can take notes alongside it during the lesson? So the students say that they want to be more engaged with the content by going through that process. 
The research shows that what happens when you do that with students and you give them the slides to write notes next to is they become more passive in the journey of learning and they learn less. So instead of them engaging fully because they don't know what's coming at them and they've got to get it all down, they've got to capture it and they've got to understand it, they think, it's all right, I've got this. You know, I'll just go back to that later and, you know, I'll listen to the podcast and I'll just take some notes. And the reality is the research says that they don't actually get that, do that well as a result. So, we do have um, some other things that happen in learning. Learning's not all about note-taking, right? There's other things that go on in classrooms other than note-taking, of course. And one of the challenges is that some subjects rely on numbers and symbols and every subject should rely on diagrams, but they're ill-suited to keyboard inputs. So then we get to this duplicity of learning, this idea that your thinking gets split into two different areas. You've got a screen, a laptop, a tablet or whatever, and then you've often got pen and paper in the same learning experience because they need to sort of do that sort of stuff as well. And that becomes a challenge for reasons that we'll talk about because to be honest with you, maths, science, physics, chem, music theory, Japanese, Chinese, art, the language, the language of those disciplines, none of them are good with a keyboard. For you to learn mathematics, you need to be able to write numbers and scribe numbers and, and annotate and diagram and go through steps and processes and iterate and reiterate and change your thinking and whatever. Science, I mean chemistry and physics, I'm sure some of you have taught that before. In, in every subject there should be diagramming because diagramming is a great way to understand. You know, Chinese and Japanese, characters that you can, um, unless you've got 14 fingers on a keyboard, you can't, you can't create the symbols required to do Japanese language very well. You can if you hold down tilde, shift, control, alt and X, then you can get some sort of a symbol out, but it's not very easy to do. So what we're doing is putting in a um, devices, or if we just go with keyboard, that actually doesn't speak the language of all of these disciplines. Um, problem solving, hypothesizing, conceptualizing and diagramming are also better done with a pen and paper than they are through a keyboard.